Hey, this is Quas from Team Liquid. Lemonation from Cloud9. Yerson from TSM, and this is the Law Class Pro Patch Breakdown for Patch 5.13. Alright, Tom Kench looks pretty amazing. He's basically the, the Kirby of support. You can just eat your allies, your enemies, or whatever. I played him, when I played him, he seemed really broken. I'm not sure if they've toned him down since then, but I assume he's going to be pretty broken. The fact that you can eat your teammates and completely save them from any gank and you're this super tank that they can't really focus makes him amazing. The fact that he can like bring a person along for a pantheon ult is also quite amazing. And eating an enemy is basically that person is, they're either out of the fight or they're dead. So either way it's really good. So he, he has a lot of power and I, I assume he'll be really good. I know he can either be a support or top lane. To me he seems like he's going to be definitely more of a support. But I could definitely see him being good in both lanes. And honestly I'm not really sure maybe he's just better top lane. But to me he seems like definitely more of a support. So they nerfed Kalista by making her normal attack only do 0.9 of attack damage. Which I think is an extremely weird change. No, no other champion in the game doesn't do their attack damage as their attack. And now Kalista will. I, I think it's kind of an awkward change. I, I would not have changed it this way, but Kalista does need the nerf, so I'm glad they nerfed her. And this definitely will make her worse, but she'll still be she'll still be picked every game, I think. So this patch is the buffing Kale's E, where they're now adding a passive component to to it. So basic um, on basic attacks, you're gonna deal a little bit of magic damage bonus on hit, and has a decent ratio of 0.15. And also, the active ratio got buffed by 0 0.05. So overall, I think these this buffs are pretty pretty nice to kill. And I'm interested to see how strong she's going to be. She's still susceptible to a lot of crack control teams. So maybe she won't be picked there. But into anything else, I think she'll be a pretty strong carry. So Nautilus got a small nerf to his E. It's the same damage early game, but as you level it up, you're losing 20 damage max rank. So it's... It's a, it's a solid, small nerf. It, it's not going to make him like bad or anything. He'll still be a viable pick, but it will remove a little bit of his power, and I, I think that was needed. I think he was a bit... He, he was definitely on the strong end of supports and top laners, so lowering him down a little is a good change. They're nerfing Nautilus E's damage uh, scaling, so now it doesn't do as much damage maximum at max level, and I don't think this is that big, a big nerf at all, but if you look at the numbers, they're pretty small nerfs, but still... It's something that will shut down a little bit of Knarlos' strengths because you also have to consider that Riptide's cooldown is reduced by a lot. If you get some CDR items, you're going to be casting your E on a 3 second cooldown at max CDR. So this damage nerf is going to be a little bit noticeable and it might cripple him a little bit, but I still think he's going to be a top pick for the top lane. So they reduced the knockup radius by one fifth on Rek'Sai's on Brodo, so it'll basically mean that 20% less on the sides is not going to hit. So it's it's like a slight nerf to Rek'Sai, you'll, you'll still be really good. It's not too big of a nerf, you'll just have to be more like, you'll, you'll have to look more at where you're unburnering. It'll just take some time to get used to. Just a small nerf. So they're giving Sin some really nice buffs. They're giving him pretty much the same treatment they did with Shen, where they added a base magic resist and scaling bonuses to him, so he's now going to have around 20 more magic resist uh, by level 18. So it's a pretty nice buff, and it'll help him in a lot of matchups that he had struggles with. For example, like Rumble matchup, where he got chunked really hard in trades. Now it's going to be a lot better. And they gave a buff to the way that his flung targets work when they hit the W, when they're, they're stuck onto these goose. But I'm not sure how strong that's going to be because it was a really difficult mechanic to work with um, and it was not reliable at all to land the root on the target. So I don't think this will, this will matter much. I think the best thing that Cinch will get is definitely the major resistance buffs and also the slow mechanics, the slow changes I think are going to benefit Cinch and he might be a viable pick. Alright, so Righteous Glory got nerfed, they removed 100 HP on it, and they made the cooldown 30 more seconds. And I, I think this was kind of not needed, at least for supports. Since the Talisman buff, most supports were kind of going towards the Talisman route, since you can use it to go in or out. And Righteous Glory still was like a good choice, especially on like people like Annie who only go in. But I think the nerf will make it so that, at least for the supports, it's going to be not built very often, or it'll be built later as like a fourth or fifth item after you have your first couple items, which isn't very often for supports. And I think it'll kind of, like 
the only really other people who build it are sometimes like Maokai Top or like Olaf Jungle will build it. And I, I think at least Maokai Top will maybe start dropping it now that it's nerfed, maybe start building Rod of Ages again. I don't really know about Olaf Jungle. But yeah, I think it'll be built quite a bit less after these nerfs. So Devar was changed to, first off, uh, it's changed a lot, but first off, it does five more damage at the beginning on, on the on-hit magic damage. And now it stacks differently. It stacks, looks like it stacks faster. You get less stacks for killing champions, but you get more stacks from doing jungle things. So you get two stacks from Rift Scuttle and five stacks from Dragons and Barons. So I think overall you're going to get stacks a, a bit faster than before. And now when it reaches 30 stacks, it transforms into a Sated Devourer, which means that you trigger on hits twice every other auto attack. So you trigger on hits 1.5 times as much. So you basically get 1.5 times more damage from the, the on hit damage as well as from any other on hits you happen to have. So basically overall, it just seems like a pretty significant buff for Devourer. And it should likely be getting taken a lot more on people who used to get it before. I used to be, see people like Shivana in jungle, in the jungle getting it like that. So I assume that'll help those kind of junglers. But it, it seems like a super cool change. There's also the ghost dog that follows you around and gets bigger as you get stacks, which just sounds sweet as hell. So they're buffing Rune Glee, which is the worst thing they could possibly do. Now, now it's not a strict buff because they're making it so that Ludin's Echo and like other spell effects don't get applied on the Rune Glaive thing. So like Ezreal Q won't apply Ludin's, but some Ezreal's weren't even building Ludin's. Like they were going Rune Glaive into like Death Cap and things like that. Like Ludin's was not core. That, that was not the issue at all. The issue was Runeglaive, and they just made Runeglaive have 10 more AP and have a 0.25 more attack ratio on the on the 80. So it's basically going to be more brutal. There's going to be more Ezreal's, more Nasus's building Runeglaive, more more of all that stuff, and more Nidalee jungles since they like, since she's the best Runeglaive builder in the jungle. It's, it's terrible. I, I think they should revert this change immediately. But the Runeglaive change, even if they did remove the spell effects like Ludin's Echo and Ezreal Q, he's, he's still going to be really strong because you get 10 more AP on the item and the base attack damage scaling is higher. So just pick another item like Death Cap and putting Void Staff in the Ezreal build and he's still going to be a fine AP mid. Definitely still going to be viable with this change. I don't think it changes anything. For the needlessly large rod change, they just made the item cheaper and less AP. I think this means that it's a lot easier to build some of the bigger items because you don't need this huge 1600 gold spike. And uh, I think Overall for mages, this is pretty good and it just allows you to get the large draw without having to save up. And sometimes you back and you don't have enough gold for 1600, but this just allows the build path to be more smooth and you to get your power spikes more frequently. The death cat change is nice overall because it just gives more ability power bonus, which just makes AP carry stronger in the late game. But overall, it's not a big change. You're still going to be buying death cap in the same situations, but it just scales better later in the game. I think the Ludin's Echo change makes it more of a niche item where if you want a ton of AP or burst, you go straight for Death Cap, but if you want more movement speed, uh, slightly earlier power spike, Ludin's is a lot better. Uh, this kind of makes the item more distinct rather than having like two items that you build just because one champion spans spells. And it makes champions like AP Kog'Maw slightly better because you want the item earlier and you want more movement speed rather than AP because he has high base damage and it's not necessarily scaling. So it allows him to get his earlier power spike and the same can be said for some other champions. The voice staff change, again, it's a lot like Death Cab. It's a very small change, it's 10 extra AP. I think it's actually the equivalent to buying like half an amp tome, so it's just it's just okay. Sure, it makes it stronger in late game and maybe slightly better as a second item because it gives more AP, but I think they just want a lot of items around 80 AP, which is why they're making this change. With the Leandris buff with 30 AP, I think it makes champions that can combine Rylice and Leandris very, very strong. That combo makes you very tanky and it shreds tanks and just completely destroys tanks. So I think we're going to be seeing a lot more Leandris, maybe as a second item on champions like Orianna, and it's going to make champions like Rumble also very strong. So they gave a very nice buff to Leandris because it wasn't being used by too many champions and they really wanted people to not feel um, like he had pretty weak stats on, on it. So they buffed it by 30 AP, which is a pretty massive buff considering they increased the price by 100. So you're getting a lot of more AP onto the item that um, you definitely didn't have any before. So I think this is going to be a, a more, a way stronger item than it used to be. And it's obviously going to be stronger on those champions that were already getting it and that it was good on. For example, Rumble, which is also a really strong pick in the current meta. So I'm interested to see how it plays out. And I expect to see a lot of, a lot more champions being played and the tanks, most tanks champions being weaker now because all of the percentage HP being more popular. Uh, the Rod of Ages change, I'm actually not a big fan of because you lose a lot of health, which is really the main reason you're buying Rod of Ages. Uh, later in the game, it does give 100 AP when it's fully stacked, but 
even with the extra mana and extra AP, I think a build path like Seraph's Embrace or Archangel with the new Leandries looks a lot better than this. Uh, Rod of Ages is going to be very situational, and the bigger reason in the past was definitely the HP. So with the HP getting nerfed, I'm not sure how much we'll be seeing Rod of Ages. Even though Rylice costs 100 more gold, especially the AoE slow is very, very big. This is going to allow champions like Cassiopeia, Kog'Maw, even more niche champions like Brand and Belkos that have a lot of AoE damage to have a big AoE slow and it's just going to make them just the champions a lot stronger, especially in team fights. Also helps skill shot champions a lot because once you get one spell onto them, they're going to be slowed and you can continue hitting more spells. I can see this putting champions like Kog'Maw and Cassio higher in priority. With the changes, uh, Will of the Ancients will be worse in lane because minions have no resistances, therefore you only have 15% spell vamp, but it'll be better later in the game. So it's something we can still see on champions like Vlad and very niche scenarios against poke heavy comps, but I don't think it will be replacing any current items because items like Leandries and Rylice got a huge buff, so we're going to be seeing more of those, and I still think less of Will of the Ancients. They're changing the way Spirit Visage healing works, so now it doesn't only apply to your self-healing effects, but now you benefit from allied effects, which is a huge buff to Serac, I would say. And also, if you get healed by an AD carry or any other champion with any healing abilities, it's going to be stronger now, thanks to this buff.